I am Liron Brummel. We are looking at government's first year in office. We've been having a number of discussions. Our focus today is on Labour and I'm chatting with the Minister of Labour, Mr. Joseph Hamilton. Minister, how are you? Thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure. We've got a synopsis of a number of issues that have occurred, things that you came into office and met. Before we just jump right into those, um, everything has to do with the pandemic as well. We're operating in, in, in a period of the pandemic, came into government uh, at, at, a, at the height of the pandemic, if you want to put it that way. How have you been dealing with it, uh, work and, you know, this, this pandemic? Well, um, quickly, the pandemic specifically created new conditions for a department that is in the Ministry of Labor, that is the Occupation, Safety and Health Department. So they now have new responsibilities um, because when you talk about health and safety, um, they have uh, been looking at that and they have to look at it. Um, we have a joint technical committee with the Ministry of Health who advise us from the medical standpoint. And our role is to ensure that all facility, whether government, whether a private sector, they have uh, laid out the protocols, um, the sanitation issues that we deal with, to ensure that people are protected who visit the office and who work within the office. And so um, that, uh, the pandemic itself, also now we're grappling with a new issue that uh, is right now very much before us and some decisions nationally will have to be made. Uh, you know, the private sector, they have taken some specific action. Uh, I just saw somebody posting BRE uh, taking a specific action to protect workers who have been vaccinated. Okay. And uh, private sector commission, they have engaged me uh, on this matter. And, I susp and the private sector commission itself this week issued a statement saying that they will support the government in whatever action uh, they take, the government takes to protect those who are vaccinated. And the whole argument about rights, uh, you know, what about our rights that are vaccinated? Uh, that, that's an important, you know, people argue it from one side. They argue, okay, you cannot mandate, but, um, the world has mandated a lot of things to ensure that you can protect society. <laughs> so we're at that place. And I saw the president speaking to the matter. Uh, I don't want to go far ahead of him <laughs> just to make the point that uh, the cabinet and the government is uh, reviewing this matter. And when a decision is made, the president will speak to the nation about it. So those are new issues that we are uh, at the level of labor and labor relations you're faced with. And you have to find ways of um, dealing with them. And of course the government, as the president said, has to be balanced in this uh, matter. But um, being in government and governing, you have to make decisions. And as people expect you to make decisions. Not all the decisions you make, uh, everybody will like them, but people will be aggravated if you don't make decisions at all. <laughs> More than they're aggravated if you make, some dec if you make decisions. So that's the government position on this matter, and, and we await uh, the president um, speaking to the nation on the way forward. On the way forward for that. All right, let's talk about some of the major projects, policies, initiatives that you would have uh, implemented or looked at or addressed in the first year in government. You came in faced with the issue of workers and a shutdown in Linden and addressing that pretty much you went straight into that. From your estimation, how was that handled and has it been resolved to the point of your satisfaction? Well, a couple of things. One, we have to first uh, appreciate where we were coming from. We were coming from a place where you had no labor ministry. <laughs> where uh, labor ministry became a labor department in the human services ministry. And of course it was starved. I, I make the point to the employees that uh, I met there, uh, that everything I have analyzed suggests that labor was treated as a stepchild within the old um, human services under the APNU government. So you're right, what we're doing is we are reestablishing a ministry. And therefore, two things you have to do at the same time. You have to build structure, 
but at the same time, whilst you build structure, people cannot wait for a service. So you have to also deliver service. And um, recognizing that, you would note that I'm very proactive on this matter. I don't leave it to the officers um, to, to, to deal with some of the fundamental issues. I have um, traveled through the length and breadth of this country into every region several times. Uh, some, some villages, some towns, several times. And um, when you have what I consider high profile labor relations issues, I go there myself because I will not have no company, whether local or expatriate company, trying to make rings around my offices. And therefore I go there and I said, this is the position. You're breaking the law and you will not be allowed to break the law. And this is how you're breaking the law. Um, and you know, you know the thing is, I believe many people were breaking the law deliberately. <laughs> they knew they were breaking the law because most if not all of them, they um, have done what they say in, 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 in court lingo, they have thrown themselves to the mercy of the court. <laughs> there was no, no, no fight or no pushback to say, Minister, what are you talking about? Um, and what we have done, uh, I have instructed that my officers will work with them to ensure that they um, rectify all of these uh, breaches. Um, you know, the gold mining, major gold mining companies, I have gone there, the bauxite company, I have gone there, and I will continue um, to go there, oil and gas companies, I have called them in and had conversations with them, making the point that uh, my role is to protect the, the rights of workers, and I will not allow, unlike, at least under my watch, um, workers' rights to be trampled on. Uh, one of the fundamental issues in that regard is people expect the ministry to do this and that, but the ministry cannot operate and investigate based, based on chatter and innuendo. Innuendos. It, are innuendos. it has to investigate based on people making formal reports about the matter. Because, Leroy, if we have reached where we have to go to court, the court will not listen to air say conversation. The court will want to see the evidence. And you will have to bring people there to, to testify uh, based on uh, the evidence. And that's how the system works. Uh, you know, people call me up. Um, left, right, and center about issues. Okay, they saw this in the Kaito News um, uh, front page. I, I don't work with the Kaito News. And I cannot properly seek to engage based on um, what Kaito News says. Uh, if I have a, a report coming out of representative union, then I can, because I, I think it has some validity because they would have done the necessary investigation. And therefore, I have gone there myself to investigate matters. Uh, workers um, uh, report. I have gone to places to investigate matters. So at the labor front, you have all of these things to be rectified. And uh, I get the sense that many of the things, the former government turned a blind eye to them. And I have the evidence to prove that. I wouldn't. Um, extended beyond that, but I'm saying that um, the former government, I'll give you one example, give the public one example to make the point, where major companies were allowed under the stewardship of the last government not to deduct taxes, GRA taxes from overtime for workers. So companies and workers had this, their own labor agreement breaking the law. And I've said to companies, it is not just a labor law you're breaking, you're breaking inland revenue law, and that's a criminal offense because you're helping people to evade tax. <laughs> you, you cannot, you know, the law is a law. Beyond 70,000, I think, is the threshold. All of us, we have to pay 33 and one third percent of taxes on all our earnings, and that is what the law said. And I will not allow no company to collude with workers um, to break the law. So, so I'm giving you that one instance, which, which is a factual thing. I have the evidence. 
And so that is the labor relations. Um, we have been able to do some things that are important. One, we have been able to recoup nearly $20 million for employees that employees have had for them. Some matters going back to 2016, I've had to resolve. Uh, call them employees uh, and say, listen, employers and say, listen, you have two choices here in this matter. Either you pay the people or I call a press conference. And that has been working, believe me, because people don't like public shame. And I will continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting concept. Yeah, yeah. Pay or, 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 or I call a press mm -hmm. conference, you know, because I have the evidence. That. So people have been complying. $20 million uh, we have recouped in, in this period, right. in one year, for, for people. Then you have, um, we have uh, been able to have some matters concluded that were outstanding, like up to yesterday. Um, the Postal and Telecommunication Workers Union and GTNT. That was an outstanding matter for a year. The, 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 um, the uh, wages um, increase. We have been able to bring them to a place whereby they uh, have compromised and they have signed uh, a collective labor agreement mm -hmm. to move forward. Because my thing is, uh, the haggling, the only people who suffer is the employees. Yeah. And so if you're representing employees as a union, they say, you have to be able to negotiate in good faith and also to ensure that you can bring this to an end because you don't serve the purpose that we drag it out forever. So that has been some success and the labor front is very quiet, you will note, in the last um, year um, because some of these matters I personally have a conversation. Like the GTNT and the U P PTW matter, I called in both parties individually and I had a conversation with them to say you all have to bring this to an end. You all have to work this out <laughs> and you all have to reach somewhere in the middle. You know, one started at 1%, 2% raise, GTNT, the other started at 9 and whatever. They met in the middle. 4% to 6%. And that is what you need to do. If you so that is one issue on the labor front. Then you have a matter that we paid as a nation scant regard uh, to. That is the safety of workers at work. And quietly, last year we had, over, we had 32 Guyanese died in this country just silently, work-related accidents. And we had over 300 accidents. Some people are still incapacitated. As a result. And so that has to stop. And how you stop that is by ensuring you build structure. And uh, because at the level of occupation, safety and health, when I went to the ministry, you only had nine officers to run this whole country. Uh, that um, complement will increase by 21 to 30. For that matter, uh, next week we start training of the persons who will be employed as uh, occupation safety and health officers because most if not all of them, they're coming with just their CXEs and now we have to train them to be an OSH officer. So they will have extensive training, training for several right. weeks, uh, commencing on the 28th. Um, so we have to train them. We have, we're adding 10 labor officers to the 16 that was there. And uh, in every region, we would have uh, at least two OSH officers, two labor officers, to properly supervise labor relations and occupation uh, safety and health issues. Um, we have noted some incidents of people d d dying, falling off of buildings. Buildings, you had that issue. And, you um, know. you know, again, I've had conversation with people like this. People who think that because they're moneyed, they could do anything. You have, I have said, you have two choices. Either you comply and allow, you support my investigation, or I call a press conference. That again has worked. And therefore, look, I don't want to have anyone business or their construction site shut down. It's, it's if starts you, in development. Right. And you know, so, 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 that is, so those are some of the things. And then, of course, we have the bit training. issues about training. Um, last year, we just trained 2,000 persons. Uh, we wanted to train 3,500 this year. Presently, 
as I speak to you, we already have committed $365 million to train 2,900 persons through the length and breadth of this country. So those are some of the highlights. And they are greater than highlights based on where we are coming from. You're coming from nothingness. Uh, so it's not like we went and I went there and met a ministry. Uh -huh. We have to build one. And at the same time, whilst we build structure, we have to give service to people. So what are we looking at in, in, in the next year as we, as we put a wrap on this? It, within the next year, taking you into the fire return, what is the vision of your, for you, for the Ministry for Labour and Occupational Health and Safety in this country, given that we're also going into, uh, or we've started in an oil and gas economy as well? Well, a couple of things quickly. As I speak to you, the nine officers that are there who are senior people, they're doing a training program with international form as I speak to you. Um, that will conclude the 26, uh, three weeks program to take them to the level where they can properly supervise the oil and gas industry. My idea is to specialize people in different areas, oil and gas, mining, construction, agriculture, uh, and all of these, the sectors. And then they will be responsible for shepherding and coaching the new staff that are coming in. So, so that is the idea on the OSH side. Uh, labor side, we need some uh, people, more extensive training at a higher level so that they can properly supervise oil and gas industry. And of course, at the level of BIT, um, we would continue the training in collaboration. That's a new thing with BIT, uh, major collaboration with other ministries, uh, youth and sports, human services, um, Ministry of Education. We have a lot of joint programs in the technical institutes, um, Borby's Technical Institute, um, GITC, uh, SQ. So I believe training was being done too fragmented and too much silos. So the whole conversation about let us together collaboratively um, do training programs so that we will have a better output in my view. And that is what, those are new things that are happening and will continue into the new year. As I see it by the end of the year, I will be in a position whereby I have officers who are competently trained at the highest level. So going into 2010, 22, properly we can supervise the oil and gas industry. Uh, I have to have conversations with the Attorney General Chambers about reviewing legislation and um, upgrading the legislation to allow for supervision of these new sectors that are coming. So, so those are some of the plans that we have going forward um, for 2022 and to the end of the year. Minister, thank you very much for chatting and highlighting that with us. Best wishes going forward uh, in the next year and into the next to, to complete the first term. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. We've been chatting with Minister of Labour Joseph Hamilton, looking at government's first year in office in the area of labour, occupational safety and health. I am Lee Brummel. Thanks for joining us. And remember to be safe.